this is the video where on the Mac we are going to use our generic Linux test machine virtual box to just have a quick look at three different Linux distros. So the last video we talked about how to set up a basic machine inside a virtual box to get it ready to run some distros into. So this one is where we are going to look at those distros. So the distros that I've chosen to look at for this our first is going to be elementary. So the elementary distro, is, as you can see from the website here, is actually they, they've kind of set it up so it, it kind of looks quite a bit like, like a Mac setup. There's, there's some things about this distro I, I do kind of like. It's nice and lightweight. Uh, I don't think it's quite as pretty as several of the other distros are. This is a distro that is based on the Debian and the, the Ubuntu core. And so... Uh, we're going to have a look at uh, what this guy looks like when we run it in a virtual box. Uh, next, we're going to have a look at Ubuntu because this is one of the most most uh, popular Linux distributions that there is. Uh, certainly, if you include everything that's based on Ubuntu, it definitely is very popular. So we are going to boot up an Ubuntu over here. I'll show you what that looks like really briefly. And the last one I want to set up is the Fedora. And Fedora is more of a, more of an advanced system as I've uh, played with this and explored it. It's actually a little bit harder to use in, in some ways. But the reason I made the decision to include it on this video is Fedora is set up with the GNOME 3 desktop, which it has in Fedora 24 here actually can be set up to resemble a Mac in, in many ways. Everything from having the, uh, the, the dock at the bottom of the screen to you know how, uh, how the systems work. And it's a very nice, a very nice system, very nice setup. So we're going to have a look at those three Linux distros. So we're going to start up our virtual machine here. And to get started with these, we first have to load the, the image the disk image here that we've downloaded from their websites into the optical drive so go into the storage section click on optical drive we're going to choose disk image and then we just want to navigate to wherever they are in this case i put them all on the desktop here so you can see it has the elementary os i'm going to hit the open now we have a disk in our drive i'm simply going to power on the machine now there's uh, various ways as this is powering on. You can use your machine in, in various screens. We have a full screen mode, which on the Mac we can hold the command button and press F and this will go back and forth between the full screen mode. And there is also the scaled mode, which is the command and C button. This one here, it's going to give us, in fact, all of these will give us the option here. It just kind of tells us what we're doing and then gives us the option here to uh, not show this message again. So in this case here, what this option actually does is it scales the, the entire machine up so that it's going to basically look the, the size of it. Again, Command C gets us back down to it. And then you can see what some of the other options are up here. Under the devices here, you can see here we can actually load and remove drives while the machine is running, network settings, USB settings, shared folders will allow you to, to share your, your different systems. Okay, that's kind of the scale. I'm going to go back to the full screen mode. Now you'll notice here, even on the full screen mode, that these are not taking up the full screen. There are a series of applications called guest editions that you would actually need to install on the machine to get most of these distros to run full screen in a virtual box. So when we actually get to installing a distro, we'll walk through how to do that. Fedora is kind of difficult to make that happen, and on several of the other ones, like all of the Ubuntu and similar type of platforms, it was a very simple matter of just adding the guest editions, no problem. So this one here, we have actually loaded up our system here. So this is running elementary OS as a live CD key. Anything we do on this desktop will not be saved. So this is, uh, if you have some suspicious website you want to look at, you could literally load it into a virtual box. If they install viruses all over, 
doesn't make a difference. <laughs> you can't save anything on this. Now, we do have the option, of course, to install on the virtual box. We'll do that later. But this one here, you'll see here that uh, in elementary, they've added this nice little dock. They're trying to get the, the Mac look. Up here, we have our, our bar. Here's our applications menu. So we can look at the, the various items that we have inside of here. This is our web browser on this particular version of Linux. So we can load this guy up. It goes right to their main home page there. See the internet works out of the box. That's because the virtual machine will piggyback off of your network connection and make sure that you have access to the internet. So you can go to a website and you, know, you can do some basic searching. So this, the, this system here, we have, uh, this is the software center. Linux installs have a software centers that are essentially like an app store on a phone or on a tablet. When you load these up, you'll see a variety of different types of programs that you can get. And these are, are great ways that you can actually add things in. Um, some of these, uh, some of these types of programs you might need to pay for, like the App Store, but in the Linux community, the vast majority of, of what's out there for, for good production software generally doesn't cost you anything. Uh, in fact, I've never paid for a Linux program, um, and I'm not even pirating any, which is cool. Um, you know, you just don't even have to worry about it. Here's a basic photo app, videos, music apps. So these come pretty much ready to go. Uh, some of your Linux distros on these just trying them out on the CD key, these may or may not work with with the audio, uh, but just uh, having a quick look, you can download these distros, pop them into a virtual box like this, and you can play around a little bit. So we'll go ahead and shut the computer down, and then I'm going to hit my uh, control F to scale this back down. So this computer is going to shut down, and then what we're going to be able to do is load in another machine. Okay, so we shut down the machine, uh, and I just did a little bit of a uh, clip there during some of the load up and the shutdown sequences. I'll cut out some of these clips here. So we've just uh, closed down the machine, so now we want to have a look at the next Linux distro, which in this case will be Ubuntu. So you want to go under your storage here, click on this, and then we can just change the disk image. Since I've already looked at all these, I'm just going to select it from the list here. This will change it into Ubuntu, hit the start button here on the machine, and then you'll see that our machine is going to load into Ubuntu. So Ubuntu is many people's first foray into Linux, uh, mostly owing to its popularity. Another popular one that you see is Linux Mint. Uh, and when we do the similar video like this on Windows, we will also have a look at Linux Mint. That's the distribution that I prefer, simply because it works so well out of the box and it's set up just like Windows. And I personally find myself more productive in a Windows type environment. So I go ahead and um, uh, run my main production computer is running Linux Mint. Although I do have one of my, my main other computers in my office is running Ubuntu. So I'm uh, very familiar with this operating system as well. Once again, like elementary, we're just going to hit the try. If you, in fact, try to install it, it'll give you a warning that there is no hard disk installed because we did not set one up when we created our virtual box. So here is Ubuntu. Um, Ubuntu is slightly controversial because of the Unity bar. You either love this bar or you hate this bar. The problem with it is for the longest time you couldn't do anything with this bar other than change the size and auto hide it and that never really worked as well. This edition of Ubuntu, this is the newest one, 16.04 at the time of this video, you can actually now put the bar on the bottom or on the side. Those are your options. So Ubuntu does have pre-install that has your Office programs. So LibreOffice is the best operating, uh, the best Office program that that uh, you don't have to buy. 
So if you're wanting to switch to Linux and you're thinking about, well, all these Office files that I have, unless you're like the top 1% of Office users that uses features most people don't know exist, LibreOffice can do it inside of your Windows system. You can even continue to save them as docx files and xlsx files in the event you need to share and collaborate with other people. There's no real issues with this. Again, we have the same software center I've seen uh, we've seen before. Over here is where you can search your computer for, for various uh, applications. So if you want to know where LibreOffice is, you can just type that in. Um, here's your system monitor, which is very much like the task manager in Windows. You can see all the processes, everything that's going on here. So here's our resources. We can see that our CPUs are about 30% each with our two CPUs. One of the things to note here is that uh, here we're only running uh, uh, less than less than one gig of RAM, which is not too bad for a modern uh, user interface. Here's our internet over here, of course. A lot of these Linux distros come pre-installed with Firefox. There's a few exceptions, but for the most part, Firefox is, is very common to to encounter. So just like the elementary, the internet will work out of the box. If you have a lower end, very modern computer and it only has a Wi-Fi card, you might encounter a few issues if it has the uh, popular Broadcom modems. They're really cheap, but they were not supported into Linux until I think the the fourth edition kernel came out. Some of your Linux distros are still running the three, and so you might need to run proprietary drivers for that. But that's an issue that uh, we'll have tips and tricks to talk about how to overcome that uh, should the situation arise. So that's a really quick, quick and dirty tour of Ubuntu. Once again, you know these are not uh, taking up the full width of the screen because we don't have guest editions installed. We'll cover how to do that when we actually install a Linux distro. So we're going to shut this guy down. It'll take a moment to shut down here, and then we will load up our last distro, which is going to be Fedora. Okay, so our, our Ubuntu machine is run, shut down. So now we're going to load up the Fedora ISO image. So come down here, select the Fedora, hit the start button. So you'll notice with Fedora, Fedora is a very modern, up-to-date system. We're going to just go ahead and load this guy up. We did have to select an option for there. Essentially, no matter where we'd get, we'd probably end up on this screen. But uh, you will notice that Fedora is a very modern UI. Uh, it does not work very well in this particular virtual box, simply owing to the fact of uh, it, is, uh, it is a little bit heavier on the system resources, mostly because it has a, a very beautiful user interface. If you were to be running that on a, you know, on a, a much better computer than a two-core, two two-gig RAM virtual machine, it would run very nice. Um, like I said, I am uh, choosing to look at Fedora, even though it is a more complicated Linux system. I'm choosing to look at it inside of uh, this video simply because it is very close to the Mac and how you can set it up. Now out of the box you can see it's not set up just like the Mac. There's a few steps you need to do to put the dock down here at the bottom. But if you come up here, click on activities, you'll see what the dock will look like. You can actually move this to the bottom of the screen down here. If you hit the show applications, you'll see it will load up your applications just like the, uh, the Mac launcher does. So there's a lot of programs installed on, on Fedora here. You can do a basic search over here. Here's our Firefox. Cheese is a, a good application to do um, some screenshots. Rhythmbox is your uh, kind of like an iTunes uh, alternative. In fact, you can subscribe to your same um, uh, podcast subscriptions you, that you subscribe to. They're all listed on here. You can search for those. 
So there's a lot of uh, a lot of neat tools built directly into here. All of these Linux distros, we haven't looked at all the settings in the Linux distros, but all these guys do have setting options. The Ubuntu setting options and the setting options for uh, Linux Mint that I like, that will have a lot of these options. I've seen some Linux distros that don't have nearly as many. This one here, you can see, does have a lot of options. If you happen to like some of the the modern day location tracking and stuff like that, you can actually uh, you can actually turn those on, turn those off. Well, in fact, when you install Fedora, it will give you the option. Do you want to turn some of these options on or off? One of the things I really like about Linux is they don't check home. They don't send back a lot of information like uh, Apple products and Microsoft products do. You'll see here that problem reporting is actually set to manual and location is actually set to off. You know, a lot of your other um, big name operating systems will make sure problem reporting is always set on by default. So it's always communicating what it perceives as problems back to the company and it always is tracking your location unless you manually turn it off. Linux has a different philosophy where they really focus more on the privacy. Some of these modern operating systems like the Fedora here with GNOME 3 will give you those same options to turn those on if you like them. And that's great. I, I like diversity. I don't necessarily want to just lock everything down. But, you know, I don't use things like online accounts to my computers. This is, you can add... You can add your your Google accounts, your Microsoft accounts, your Apple accounts. You can add them all to this operating system and they'll work. I don't like those types of accounts. I don't use those types of accounts. And so for me, I like the options. They're not so deeply integrated in. I don't have to use them. But for those that are available, you can see that uh, the, various, uh, the various options here are available. So since I went on the internet everywhere else, let's have a look here. And it is running a little slow just by nature of the fact that this is a, a lower uh, quality machine on a virtual box. But So we can see here the internet is working just fine. If you want to change the background on, on Fedora, a lot of these um, uh, operating systems here in Linux actually come with quite some beautiful background images that you can use. You can select that when there's a nice background image. So you can set up your desktop. And of course, like uh, other operating systems, you can go into the settings and make sure you have your icons here to get to your trash if you want in your icons. All, all of the Linux distros will, will have that. Uh, some of them are, are more complicated to get to, some of them are easier to get to. But there's a, a basic walkthrough on just how to give Linux distros a really quick uh, walkthrough so you can have a, have a look at what some of these look like. and. Hopefully that will encourage you to take the next step, which would be installing one of these distros on your operating system and then getting it all set up so that uh, you can actually start to learn Linux, explore Linux, play with Linux, and realize that it is actually a very fabulous operating system. So this has been Tom with Switched to Linux. And come on by the website, check out more tips and tricks. And let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to see or know.